everybody. Welcome along to the History Programme with Limerick, the Limerick Historical Society. I should say this, um, this you can find, if you want to get more, you can try us on Ella, uh, lairmedia.tv or you can go to the YouTube, uh, YouTube channel on Lear Media TV. And uh, don't forget to, to press the subscribe button, which is on the bottom corner of the right hand corner of the screen. It doesn't cost anything. So just click on it and we'll see how many, if, the, if there's anyone in our listeners or something. But uh, again, uh, back with me again this week, uh, Tom Dillon. Tom, you're welcome along to the program anyway. Johnny. Thanks. And uh, after a few hiccups and uh, me being late after and one thing and another, we're finally on the air. Anyway, uh, incidentally, Tom, I got um, I got three emails from people that watched the programme. Of course. One came from New York, could you believe? Mm-hmm. And uh, people are kind of, um, well, let's say, they're, they're finding us by degrees, you know. I got a couple of emails as well from more, more local people. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, during lockdown, people are Googling and, and going through the internet and they're, they see our pussy, as you say, and they look in and... Uh, Listen to us. Yeah. Uh, one one man uh, heard our review of Harry Mudd's book, and he found it interesting. So yeah. and I know a few people bought, bought the book on foot of the uh, interview or the coverage they got, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, oh, uh, and a few members of the historical society got in touch with me as well. Yeah. So if, uh, if anybody, we hope that God, or God only knows, does God even know if mm-hmm. we'll be back this year at all. So we hope we will be back and maybe it'll be August or September, but yeah. if we go back even for the winter for a few lectures, at least it'd be, yeah. it'd be something anyway. You know, that's with the Limerick Historic Society. Yeah. Anyway, tonight uh, we'll waffle again and wander along again about various, I suppose, various subjects in that. Uh, yeah, well, people, um, sorry, I, I got a good few queries on tracing families today, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the last few weeks and you have as well. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, like, the, there's so much you can go into now, like, uh, to look up even free sites. You know, the Irish genealogy site is fantastic, where you can get the birth dates and marriages, the civil birth dates and marriages. Um, not, not all of them are there now, but you can get quite a lot of them. And um, the, the problem is you get distracted. You go in and... <laughs> Tell me about it. Tom, I spent nearly four hours today going to burials above Mount St. Lawrence. Yeah. And I just picked, I said, I'd pick at random. Uh, 1940, Yeah, I picked. And the only, the only problem is, I knew a lot of the people that, that the relatives that were on the thing, and yeah. a lot of the names. And funnily enough, they're still in the same place. Some of them are, that I knew straight away. There were some real Limerick names that are... Okay. The, what do you mean they're still in the same place? In the graveyard? No, no. The people that died was in 1940. Oh, yeah. The houses. The great yeah. grandson are still in the same house. Yeah. And also they're still in the same area. And of course, the easiest ones of the last, for me, in Limerick City, are the, the names down the wine mill. You know, I came across Stanners now, I remember, you know, and I, and I know that the, the people I know their mothers, you know, I don't remember obviously somebody from 1940, but yeah. I remember I said the man that I know must the man that I remember back in the 60s must have been her son, you know, yeah. or whoever it was. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Alter, I came across, who obviously must be either a brother or a father of Charlie Alter. And awesome. when, when I was telling you about a few weeks ago that I met, you know, but awesome. that the, the, the real I saw Hinegers. I saw Hinegar that died up in Jamesboro, and uh, obviously Frank Hinegar's father, I'd say, that is, you know, because the Jamesboro houses didn't really, people didn't die, we'll say, die there till, we'll say, after 1930, you yeah. know, so that if you got, you know, to, to, to us, the real address. Yeah. Uh, even in my own, although a lot of the addresses for Prospect now, for example, where the roads, before they'd given them uh, addresses, uh, uh, titles and the avenues, with A Road, B Road, and C Road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whereas I knew that uh, the Bourne Avenue now was always, when I was a child, even to still call the C Road. We go yeah. up as far up the, she lives up at the top of the C Road, you know, my aunt would say. And that was uh, Bourne Avenue. But I saw Sir Vincent Nash, I remember coming across him from 1941. It gives all the graves what site, if you want to find a grave, it's ideal for finding yeah. a grave. You know, but the only trouble is I, I got lost. You get lost when you start looking for names. You can go into the obituaries then on the 
uh, on the library side. You can look up their obituaries, you know. To, it was in the library side, I was on out, it was granary. Oh no, I thought it was because there's a site with the headstones as well. Oh yeah, sorry, but I'm just saying because that's where I was on, but the year, I some of them have been transcribed and they're easier to read. Yeah. You know, when they're, they're, they're done by hand, somebody would love the handwriting, whoever it was. Yeah. But, uh, but like that, so, cause some of the old ones are very difficult to read. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the registers you're looking at. Oh yeah, the register, sorry, I should say that. Oh, sorry, it was, it was um, in the Libic archives. Yeah. That's what I was looking at. And it's difficult to read some of the only that you would make out once you're local, yeah. you'd know what they were, you know what, what the addresses were. But yeah. so many people have died and they don't give addresses, they give the city home. Yeah. Was the, the main hospital. Yeah. And you see, people nowadays looking at that would think, oh, my poor mother died in the city home. Yeah. There was no place else yeah. you know, that, that they died in, you know, in the city home. It yeah. gives you um the mental home, it gets down as a mental home, it says, you know, and people then some people would like to find that out, you know, that it was, but then it wasn't because they were just signed in there. There was no other help for them, like, you know. It may be just a slight, you know, loss of loss of memory or you know, they might be going yeah. you know, Alzheimer's that they might be put into the mental before they died, you know. Um uh you know, and like I remember I think I told you before visiting the mental hospital. In the 70s, with my mother, there was a neighbor in there, and it was terrible, it was a depressing place. Like, you know, it was really glum, and people just wandering around. And we, my mother said to me, Coming out, I hope she said that I, I never have to come in here, you know. Um, like, and the poor woman was there, she came out again. Like, but, uh, like if you were depressed, you wouldn't get it, you wouldn't be improving in there anyway, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but like that, um, that, when you get back to looking for, it's a pity they don't give the addresses of some of these people. Addresses would be a name down, the ages down, a lot, a lot of drawings I came across now. Yeah. It was amazing. I know one family now I came across today, and the young fellow was drowned. He was he was sixteen, I think. I know yeah. the family. They did live down uh, on Arthur's Key. It says Arthur's Key. I know who they are, yeah. and uh, uh, they did live in Arthur's Key. And uh, obviously it's a relative of the family that I know, you know, mm. that um, I know the name and like that he was drowned. I'd love to know how he was drowned in Arthur's Key. You know, yeah. did, he, did he fall in? What happened? You know, you'd love to know like how how it came about. If you went back to the newspapers for that day, you'd probably find... Oh, you would, you would, you would. But tell me, you'd need, you need to be doing really nothing else and you'd spend hours. I mean, I yeah. spent uh, the, the bones of four hours today. Yeah. If anyone came in and said to me, what are you doing? I'm going to list the dead, the yeah. list of the dead for, for 1940. I only got as far as 1943. Yeah. And uh, I thought I'd get up to 50 or 55 and find my own father's death in it. But yeah. uh, I, I got intrigued in reading some of the some of the people who they were. You know, yeah. and but the only thing is you come across it's just Mount Saint. Well, you can tick then on the Lawrence Mount the Mount's um the main graveyard, we'll call it, you can click on the extension or you can click on Mount St. Oliver, yeah. where my brother and my mother are buried. Yeah. And yeah. Want, I didn't get, get a chance to go to that, but you yeah. could spend hours. If you're interested, some people couldn't care. Yeah. Same with the, with the dead sets now, um, like what you're saying, they, they died in the workhouse. Yeah. And they don't give the address, they just say died in the workhouse. In the workhouse, yeah, yes. Yeah. They signed up by the master of the workhouse. So. You'd really have to go back and try and find another member of the family to see where they lived, you know. Yeah, uh, it's very difficult. You know, that it's yeah. difficult. The only thing is when you're when you're interested, when you're interested in, as I said, you you start going through you with me, especially the city, I know, I know who they are. Oh, I said to myself, he must be related to such a person. And you know, and there's so many of them. There's so many names then the same that uh, it's hard to distinguish. You know, if I, but as I said, the names from the wine mill now are no problem. I know straight away who they are when you see, you know, I know the families that are still around, you know, but it's interesting to see. But a lot of drownings, I was amazed the amount of drownings there were. Drowned at Classy, somebody else was, you know, and I looked at the age, six years of age, I think it was. So yeah. you want somebody uh, trying to swim or swimming, but they're very interesting. But as we said, some people put on the loft and fell in as well then. And there wasn't much street lighting, so they got, you know, uh, and then people coming home with drink on them, 
to step up to the chair and butt in, you know, it's just, especially yeah, I, that- I remember fellas coming home uh, down to a prospect, they'd be drunk. They always reminded me of homing pigeons, you yeah. know. How is it they found their way home? You know, they, they arrived. You know, they might have went into the wrong house, but chances are they found <laughs> the well, wrong house. You know? find, they find it better when they were, than when they were sober. This is there. There was a saying, they went home by a rail, they'd hang on to the railings like in oh, the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I remember so many fellas going home drunk, you know, and you'd watch them to see whether they're okay, even crossing the street, you know. <laughs> Some of them were like belly dancers going across the street, but they still, they still made it. They still made it to the other side, you know. <laughs> it's you know guys walking, like the hands out to keep themselves from falling, you know, to keep their balance, you know. Oh, yeah. But like that, tracing the names is fascinating if uh, if you get interested in it. A lot of people can well, go... The Stanners, they're in China. Were they a windmill family, the Stanners? Stanners, yeah, yeah. I remember I remember all Mrs. Stanners, I do. She lived down at the, the, the mosque, she had the site now, in uh, where the windmill is. And uh, I remember the houses, they lived there in the houses, the big long gardens gone into them. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a timber merchant there afterwards, but there were high houses, I remember. And uh, I, I remember the, the women would sit outside the summer's evening. And yeah. I remember going down to relations of, of my uncle, Joseph Maloney. And, I, you know, you could see the I remember the women there sitting. You, you, there were big land gardens, but they were, they were wrecked. The gardens were wrecked, you know, as, like dilapidated, like. Yeah. And uh, it was really kind of hard ground. But there were lovely houses, I'd say, at one stage with mm-hmm. gardens. But then with any houses like that, they became tenements. Yeah. Like below in John Square. I remember going down to visit a family in John Square with my mother. Uh, funny, where Larry, where Larry Walsh's museum was, in that yeah. particular house, up at the top of that, I remember as well, she visited a family there. And we were in that main door, of the museum was for a while. And I remember visiting a woman with my aunt, down near St Mary's Cathedral, but the houses have gone now. There were there were three or four houses there. Carnies were there in a shop. There were three or four. Where well, there's an open space now. There's a kind of a, a monument there, a bit of a, a bit of a monument there on a square. And there were four lovely houses there, three-story houses. A carny shop. That wasn't the same carnies that were up off of um, Edward Street, no? No, I don't think so. No. Uh, I think afterwards went around onto Mary Street afterwards, but it, that, that's gone now as well, you know. But uh, anyway, but um, yeah. I remember there were, there were fine houses there, and they just disappeared. They're in actually in one of Sean Cotton's. You'd often see there's a lawn print taken from Bank Place, looking over towards the over Matthew Bridge, and you can see these houses still as a whistle. Mm. But this girl that we visited had a flat up in the top of the first one. The entrance was actually in Bridge Street. Yeah. I remember, and we got out to visit this girl at night. Uh, she worked with my aunt in the Jordan factory, and she, it was a great thing to get a flat, as they called them. It was a kind of a, a place you got when you were married, and you hoped to either get a corporation house or save up to, for a deposit to buy a house. Yeah. But these flats, but they, they were horrible buildings, some of them, you know. They were just flats, and you yeah. probably got uh, two rooms and shared uh, a, a toilet. Mm-hmm. Never mind the bathroom, you shared the toilet. And that's I'm talking about in the early 60s. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard to believe that. Yeah, yeah. Was around the town at that stage. There were two houses I remember in Henry Street. There were a, a lot of people called places, but these were the first ones I heard called Hatter's Castle. These were two big Georgian houses where there's um near the, right next door to the to the the video school there, where there's a Chinese place there now. It's yeah. kind of an open space. There were two big high houses there. And there were yeah. a rake of families. Yeah, that, uh, I remember yeah. them well. Yeah, let me post, is it? Yeah, right, let me let me post. There an open square. There was there was a garage afterwards, actually, Jones's garage. They I think they demolished the two big houses. But there were two fine Georgian houses. And uh, they, they were nearly out in the roadway, uh, yeah. with steps going up to them. And I can still I could I could name all most of the families that were there. And I even know where they are now, so the families that lived in, in those houses, because I went to school with some of the young friends, because it was near the school in Henry Street when I went to school. Yeah. But like that, there were tenements. Yeah. And you hope to get a corporation house out of it, or get enough money together to um, to buy a house 
if yeah. you're with a, hand, a handy job or a good job, you know. Because that's what happened, like Charlotte Key and Artist Key. They were all high class, and like John Square, and yeah. they, they became tenements then, you know, and it, there were terrible conditions. Terrible. Um, yeah. Munger Street, look at Munger Street when so Lord Mandela was born in Munger Street, which is yeah. hard to believe. A yeah. really fashionable area. The yeah. only house that remained there was um, Pax Kane's house. It was standing on its own near the corner of Palmerstown, or as they call it now, Sean Houston Place. Yeah. There was a big, um, a big Georgian house there, a four story house, a shop that was Kane's. And uh, as I said, Pax, I think Pax Kane was a rugby player. He lived there. But anyway, that was there up to about 20 years ago, I'd say. Standing mm. alone on its own. Yeah. You know, and all the other houses, the only one that remained. Yeah. There was nothing else beyond that. You know, no other houses. But that yeah. was left there. And I remember a few houses across the other side, roughly where there's a, a roadway going in out to the market, right behind. And actually, at the back entrance of the market, let's call it. Mm. You couldn't go in there. There were houses right across that entrance there. But the fact those I do. But the flats, isn't it? Yeah, but the flats. I remember uh, one family there had a kind of a house that they kept boarders, old men really, yeah. that they had no place else to go. And I remember being fascinated passing down, you see these old men sitting there and sitting outside in the daytime. Yeah. And uh, they, they paid so much a week. It was the forerunner, let's say, of the brother, uh, what is it called, brother Russell home above. You know, that these old men would be there. They all looked old. They're probably even only in their, in their 40s and their 50s. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is another thing you see on the deaths today, at the age people died at. Oh, yeah. Very, very few over 60. Hmm. You know. You see, back in the Limit Chronicle, she reached the grand old age of 70 or, you know, that, that was, that was kind of, you know, because people, died, as you said, died in their 50s and 60s. And to reach 70 was a, an achievement. Oh, it was. And if if you got, I got one today now, and it was uh, eighty. I think he was eighty five. Yeah. And when I found who he was, I said, "No wonder he would." You know, he go, he no stress in his life. You know, and uh, the some you see most of them now are all the fifties and sixties. Most yeah. of them. I came across um, Stephen Tuberty. He was the man that had the bakery in Athlone Street. He yeah. lived out, which look at the house is still survived. Jane Mount out in Carberry. And there's still a lovely lads going into it there. And the right hand side, as you go, they've called it the, the housing estate there, Jane Mount Park. Yeah. At least Hubbardy's house still survives. And yeah. uh, his death was there, I think, for some time. In, well, it had to be either 42, 41, or 1941 or 1942. And, uh, but how, like, long, how long did the bakery last? Oh, the bakery was there up to, it was there up to the late 60s anyway, because there was a man who was kind of well-known in Limerick, who used to drive the horse and car. He was, he was Psyche Morton. Why they called him Psyche, I don't know. Maybe he's, he, knew, he knew what was happening. But I remember Psyche well, I do. And Psyche used to drive the horse and car for yeah. Tuberties. And yeah. uh, all the children would hang on to the back. And Psyche sometimes would, would uh, catch them out. He'd jump off, you see, and they wouldn't expect him. He'd come around with a big stick. Yeah. Yeah, that's why he's called Psyche. It's psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody around St. Mary's, especially New Psyche. He's, yeah. he's gone around in a horse and car. What do you think of it like, you know? And uh, the horse delivering the, the bread. You know, the horses did, the Guinness horses, of course, were the most famous of the last. You know, yeah. the big, uh, what did they call them in England? The big. Clydesdale, was it? Clydesdale, yeah. The Clydesdale horses. I remember watching them and you knew they were strong, you know? Yeah. They, 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 the things on their legs, they were like oak boots, you know, yeah. the, the, the ends of their legs. And you knew this, they were able to um, able to pull a weight. But they were, the, Guinness is only really used those. Wasn't there a joke, wasn't there a joke about Tuberty's that Ned in the paper? A uh, man wanted her state. Is that <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> there are no things you hear, like, you know. <laughs> But uh, but top of this, the building is still has still survived on that local street uh, because at local street uh, people are laughing at me saying there's a new street you know it's only broken through I think in 1842 or 18, I think 1842 they broke through right through Box House yeah. which is there behind which used to be the Vans Pub and yeah. that's actually people wonder about that uh, some brain box got the idea to put a fountain in there 
and to, now it's, it's it's just a rubbish, uh, what they say, bin, the people put cans and that into it. But that's actually the inside of the house that you're looking at. The house was kind of, was in the middle of the road, and they uh, went through the house when they put in the road. But right next to that, it's now a motor factors. Yeah. And that was covered. It's just a huge thriving business for us, yeah. for the whole uh, Carbley, uh, I should say, St Mary's Parish area. Yeah. Yeah. Bet, like you had the top of these canes, dailies, don't the bakeries in them, you know. Yeah. So many bakeries. And you had small bakeries. Yeah. You had another, you had another two above in, uh, in Ed, you had one in Edward Street, Humphreys was his name. And the man with thick glasses, I remember. And uh, he used to bake the bread and he'd go around delivering it in the daytime. And I don't think himself and this, the driver spoke for about 30 years. And he used to go around in, in the van. You know, he was a funny man, the driver. Oh, somebody I never really took much to him. But the driver was a nice man. I think, I, I honestly think they didn't talk anywhere for, for years. Oh, oh Humphreys? Uh, Humphreys, yeah. And he's, I remember him starting the van with a, a, a starter, you know, like you see. And a, and a cowboy picture, you know, with a starting handle out yeah. the front. And uh, they'd come around Prospect, I remember, uh, delivering the bread, Humphreys would. Yeah. And I don't know if he came, whether he had any family or not, I don't know. But it was on a lane where, going up, which is now Buck Avenue, off, near roughly round where the where the ball boy band room is now. Yeah. The lane went up there. And there were hundreds of houses up there, lots of laneways. Mm. before they built uh, that area up there of, of Buck Avenue. There was one woman I know lived up that lane right there and she got a house in Buck Avenue directly behind the old house and they were able to put the furniture <laughs> They were actually, that house would be at the front gate of where the houses are now yeah. and they were able to move their, their furniture straight into the house from yeah. the old house and uh, then they demolished the houses in front. I remember going up visiting there with my aunt to this yeah. particular woman but uh, like that, they, when they built that square up that then they demolished, I think they demolished about four laneways there, if I remember, that were yeah. going up as you come down, before you come down to the traffic lights there on the corner, which again is in a, is in a bad state now, mm. because there was a, a, a lovely fish and chip shop there, uh, John Acton's, and yeah. a massive trade in, mm. uh, in fish and chips, yeah. and the, all the family were involved in it, and uh, the chips were, were three pence, I think it was three, Roughly about four cents now for a, for a, for a bag of chips, yeah. you know, and then yeah. they, they went, uh, you could get a, a different kind of shirt size bag for four pence. Yeah, any dearer, you know, but uh, they, they sell the area, you see. Pay four euros now for a bag. What? You pay four euros for a bag now. Oh yeah, imagine it. Yeah, it's hard to believe, you know, that how, how, how cheaper things were, you know, yeah. but I like that. Um, the bakery, so Daly's Bakery. Daly's had a place in, uh, mm -hmm. they, were in, in they, they were the halls, you see. You forget the connection between them and doors. Oh, yeah. It was the halls in William Street. Yeah. The, the shop was in lovely, uh, lovely old Irish script, I remember. It was roughly along, I think it could be where Michael Gleason's shop is. Incidentally, Michael Gleason's oh, yeah. wife died, yeah. Uh, she lived in Capamore. She was buried last Tuesday, you know. Yeah. But, um, but Michael uh, in his shoe shop in William Street, I think there's, I'd have to go down on stand and look. I think yeah. it's there where the horse was, who really was Daly's. Yeah. But he had the bakery then down in Sarsfield Street. He married Daly. He married Daly. Yeah, he married Daly, yes. Yeah. So you kind of forget that the connection. Because yeah. I remember couldn't figure out why it was the whore over the shop. Yeah. And we knew it was Daly's bread. Yeah. You couldn't figure out. You never kind of explained as to what the connection was. So just explain that, Tom. You just send there. Well, um, Do Emma Dore married uh, John Daly's daughter. So they, um, and John Daly set up the bakery. So th that's why it was Daly's bread. And then it became the whole because of the, the Gaelic kind of connection, you know. But he was from Glen, Dore. Dore was from Glen, yeah, yeah. But Daly was a the Limerick family, John Daly, and of course his nephew. Oh, no, that, one of the daughters is still alive. She, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, him died, the gentleman is still alive. Still yeah. Yeah. yeah, I met him before, yeah. yeah. Right. But then there's a connection between them and uh, Anthony O'Riordan. I can't think what the connection is now from William Street. Yeah. Connection. So anyway, that's the story. Everybody remember Anthony uh, Anthony O'Riordan. He used to, 
he was working, I think he was about 85 or 86, and he's doing a lot of he's doing messages for um for some solicitor in town. He's going around delivering mail, you know, for them. He kind of kept him occupied, yeah. you know, in the mornings. Yeah. He'd written the mornings from about half past nine till about one o'clock, yeah. five days a week, you know. Yeah. And I remember I remember Anthony going around delivering things. But like that, Daly's Bakery, I remember there was a man living near us one time, uh, Frank Ahern. And Frank, uh, Frank d- drove a, a horse and car for dailies. Yeah. And then they, they, they matured onto, onto motor cars. And incidentally, Frank used to have an ice cream van. He had a horse and car, which a pity it was never preserved, you know, yeah. that um, he went around selling uh, ice cream from, from, uh, from, horse, uh, from a cart pulled by a horse. Yeah. And he'd fill the cones himself. Also, he, I remember his son took it over after with Cecil. And Cecil just had these big, huge blocks of ice. I don't know where he bought these. Baby. And he just smashed these up into smithereens to yeah. put in around the bucket of the ice cream. Yeah. Keep it cold, you know. Yeah. And then Cecil, uh, when the horse went, the, the, the thing at the back, the trolley went, and Cecil had a hand cart. And I used to go with him, actually, to the ice cream. And yeah. There's a huge, big, huge big tub that was put into this bucket of ice. Don't ask me how he made the ice cream, but he made it and he showed it because yeah. the best place for him was, and I remember being with him, on Sassfield Bridge when they're coming in from the matches. Yeah. There'd be a queue there. And uh, I was only standing up like a dummy, just handing him things as he wanted them, you know. But Cecil did all that. I don't know what you can charge him for the cones, but it was a great place to be yeah. when the crowd was start coming in. From mm-hmm. the matches, and they'd all buy the cones just pre, pre before the, the fella going around in the in the van playing the music, and you know yeah. for the children, Mister Whitby, as he was first called, you know. Was the door, like the the door named D- Daly's uh, son was killed, or excuse, nineteen sixteen. He was the only boy. So then the the ladies were left. So M. Door, who was involved in nineteen sixteen as well, and that that didn't hinder their, you know, with regard to nationalism. It didn't hinder their business because people yeah. supported them, you know, and they had the slogan, give, give us our daily bread, was the... Oh, the yeah, 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 you are, yeah. And I forgot that, and across the road in on that side, you had what was known as, but I think that went through a few different donors. You had the Abbey Court. I yeah. know that Vincent Feeney was involved in that. No, not Vincent, no, the worked in Todd's, another Vincent Feeney, who was Mary Limerick. And uh, it's the building there, there's um, the TSP head afterwards on Sassfield Street, a lovely building, actually. Yeah. And lovely upstairs in it. And that's where the Abbey Court was. And they, 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 they used to do their baking then out on Nicholas Street. Yeah. And then, of course, you had Ted Russell's firm, which you had the NBC, yeah. the National Baking Company, which was Ted Russell's. And yeah. they had a lot of um, they had a lot of, of, of shops and a big yeah. bakery as well down in uh, off, off Broad Street. It's you know, it's amazing that the, the amount of that were there. Sean Corton has good pictures of that, of the NBC. Yes, yes, yeah. And here's the, here's the vans actually lined up, a yeah. picture of the vans. And you had uh, you had other bakery, you had other kind of sweet Keynes bakery, of course, which was massive there on the top of Thomas Street and with the main shop onto Wickham Street. Yeah. And the two separate sides inside there, all the buns and confectionery as you went in were on the left hand side. I remember them well. And on the right hand side, you had the bread, you know. Yeah. And then you had a distinction, of course, in the buying of the bread as well. You had um, a cottage loaf, yeah. I forget about, and then you had what were known as the outsides. They were cheaper because they were the two end loaves of yeah. a batch of bread, yeah. and they were cheaper. They were kind of gone fairly quick because yeah. people forget they were about two pence or three pence, I think, cheaper than the main loaf and the inside. And my aunt would never buy the outside, you know. They were kind of beneath her. She only went to, she only went to, to the middle. You were warned, you know, don't get me an outside. But the buns, they were, that was in Keynes, but on the other side, you had Troy's Bakery. Oh, Troy's, yeah. Yeah, they, were in, in, uh, they were in Patrick Street where they did the baking. And then they had, some of them had a junior shop just selling stuff. Yeah. Troy's used to have one above in Catherine Street, which is now an antique shop, I think. And that yeah. could be gone now as well. But you had all these bakeries around. You know, and of course, we can't forget our friend, John, John Collins. John Collins. John, the Finns. Yeah. They, 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 but they were mainly buns as well as a confectionery. T-shirt. 
Yeah, as you remember, John went. He was sent to. Uh, was it dad's school? He was sent to train how yeah. to how to bake confectionery. Mm-hmm. Think about it, like you know, yeah. it's really hard to believe. Yeah, but uh, I was watching a program today about the 1947 snowstorm on T.G. Catter. Yes, you know, people were out, were bound for weeks without. But they, some some people said they were nearly half starved, but one man said that they had plenty because they had just killed a pig. And his mother had what reminded me there was she had a ten stone bag of flour, and she was able to make the bread from the flour. And uh, then his mother got sick, and the father had to make the bread. And she was shouting out from the bedroom to the father how to make the bread. But he said it was awful, whatever he did to it, you know. But the, the point is, like, even with even with the bakeries, those still, still women making their own bread, you know, um, they'd make two loads of bread a day, especially with big families, and they, they probably would even last, you know. Oh like, yeah. A lot of people bake. There was a woman living there, my aunt now, Maureen Farley. Maureen used to used to bake bread. Um, oh, she was always kind. I just think of it. I she used to send down to our house to know had we any sour milk. Yeah. And uh, but sometimes then it was gone so sour she couldn't use it. I think. But I remember having to go up with this disgusting thing in a in a, in a jug yeah. and hand it in, and Maureen said, "Thanks very much." Then she would give back my aunt some of this bread that she baked. Yeah. And I guess I wouldn't eat it now. I remember eating it, and you thought you didn't think anything of it. My mm. mother used to bake a cake with um, she called it um, what she oh. called it, station men's bread. Yeah. She said that there was only a, uh, a cotton to every station. You yeah. know, there might be about two cottons in a slice. That yeah. cottons were expensive, you see. Yeah. But we give us that little bit. It was like I think that was a called it spotted dick. That's but right. it was um. My mother and I would bake that. My aunt never really baked as such, but she sent it up to my head. She when she'd marry Farley to do it up the road, and I'd bring up the sour milk to her. But you know, the people that bake that homemade bread, yeah, they're gone by the board now. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, I don't people probably wouldn't even know, but I, I, when I grew up, the only time we got uh, baker's bread or sliced bread was when we went to the bog or the meadow. You know, we, we had we, we took ba- uh, homemade bread to school. And I remember one day a guy who was living with his grandmother, and I suppose she didn't make homemade bread, but he offered me uh, three slices of Swiss roll for my homemade bread. I thought the guy guy was mad, you know. (laughs) He'd give me his Swiss roll. He was sick of Swiss roll, and I was sick of the homemade bread, so we did a swap. (laughs) There was an insult then, like, you saw a fella with the spotted dick on the, you'd you'd say to him, your mother must be standing over in Lahal when she threw the corners at that one, you know. <laughs> if you saw a few windows. A, sta- a station, was it a station master? Or, oh no, a train driver's bread, I think it was. Yeah, oh, train right. driver's bread. But there was a corner in every, every, in every station, you know. But uh, you wouldn't want to be baking it now because it's saying when he stops about three times got stolen. Yeah. You know? But that time you'd, you had, actually, when you think about it, I remember the first stop was out in Killone and outside. That was the, the first. Train stop. You know, yeah. it's hard to believe you killed on and you could nearly throw a stone out to kill on now. It's only out the road, you know. But there were so many stops that time. You know, train, train tennis, there's so many stops as well, you know. Oh yeah. But, yeah. but sometimes you'd be told then, especially the, the Galway line at times now, it, it takes ages, you know. So for us tell somebody told me you wanted to do a quicker walk and it, you know, they got the train to Galway and it took ages. Yeah. You know? I, I, I think it one day, I didn't mind it, you know, I didn't think it was that bad. Once you're, once you're not in a rush, it took two hours actually one day. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think I'll wait till you get the bullet said, you know. But yeah. but like, like getting back to the bakeries, where things have changed like over the years in the city, oh, yeah. you know, with like you said, with bakeries now, there's so many things have gone, and yeah. you'd wonder, you know, what's to become of us? You'd wonder, you know, in years to come. Farmers' wives like wouldn't um, admit to buying vegetables, you know. Yeah. <laughs> In the shop because they'd be saying like you did you didn't plant enough for or for your own uh you know they might buy beans or, or peas but they would never buy vegetables in the shop like you know and same like they rarely bought bread because it, it, it was showing that you weren't able to that you weren't cooking baking your own one regret i have got to school was uh, that i never went over for the free bone and yeah. the, the, the half pint of milk but, Seems like was, you were entitled to it if your father was dead, or I think he was unemployed. Yeah. And there was a little shop up at the top of where I, the top of Upper William Street, 
in the corner. Um, there was a fellow there afterwards had a little shop there, which is a shame, really. It's still there now, the building with a galvanised roof. But next to that, there was a house. Before you came to Brown's, Brown's no relatives of mine, there were barbers next door to that. And there was a, there was a woman there, and you went over there in the morning, you, you were kind of released from class. Yeah. At about 11 o'clock. And yeah, I remember there were two young fellas in the class used to leave, and they could go over there and get a bun. Mm. And uh, a half pint, a little small to half pint bottles of milk. Mm. And I never knew till I was in six tests that I was entitled to that. Mm. Now, it wasn't for the sake of the bun and the milk, it was for getting out of the class. Yeah. It was great, like they could leave. Yeah. Come back at about 10 past. They were gone for about 10 minutes, I'd say. Yeah. You know, and I remember envying them, seeing them going out. They could just prop their hand and teach would let them off. Mm. And uh, they went out for this milk. And I remember finding out uh, when I, I think I had about three months to go and see. It wasn't worth it then at that stage, yeah. finding out that I was entitled to that. God, I said, did awful. I could have been running out every morning, five miles a week, getting a bun and a, and a, a, pint, a half pint of milk. They had that in England as well, and Margaret Thatcher did away with it. Um, yeah. They called her Thatcher the Milk Snatcher because she took away the, the free milk from the kids. I don't remember that now, yeah. yeah. I don't remember yeah. that now. But like that, that, that was a little house. Well, who was she to contact with? It must have been the social welfare or somebody. Hellfire. Yeah, the building is still there now, and at the very top of, of William Street on the right hand side, and before you come around to the, the city theatre, you know, and I remember as well, I do. And, uh, but like that, how much has changed? But that's one regret I have in it. I didn't get out for the free bone in the mm. mornings. But like that, like that uh, so much, uh, as I said a while ago, so much has changed in the city over the years. Yeah. But getting back to, to, as we started off, talking about name searches, it's very interesting to go tracing your name, to find out. Well, it is, because you, there's so many free things now on the internet like, that you can look up. Um, like you have the census, the two census, 1901, 1911. And I don't know why they haven't released the 1921 census. Uh, yeah. Which I was talking about there recently. Yeah. Probably, you know, you know, don't, uh, which would add a lot to. But even, even with the 1901, 1911, and they also put up the tide plotments from, and Griffith valuation. Uh, from you stay with the tide plotments down there, just. Yeah, the tide plotments. Well, they're all based on tax. And uh, the tide was, you'd give a tenth of your income uh, to the government, which was a tax. So, uh, and then you were assessed for the tide. So, uh, and, and it, like a, a bad assessment could, could ruin you. You know, if you were assessed uh, more than what your neighbor was, you know, and we said before, that's where the expression bad cess to you came from, you know. Uh, you got a bad cess, you were ruined. So you, you were assessed for the, the tides and you had to pay it, but there was a lot of resentment towards it because it was to the uh, established church the Church of Ireland, and most of the people who were paying it for Roman Catholics. And uh, it wasn't until the 18, late 1830s that they were abolished. And it was a huge imposition on, on Catholics and was to pay for the upkeep of the established church and the rectors, you know. And but the the listing of you see, but the problem with the tithes is that it's not it's not everybody, it's only the the, the person who's assessed, so it's the, the head of the household is named, but it's a good indicator of where people lived at the time, you know, families, so you know, the family name. But well, is this, is this uh, a tiny apartment book that do they apply to the cities? No, no. See, that's, so there's somebody from the city now, the tiny departments wouldn't be much interested no. in. It's a good valuation. valuation, yeah. yeah. It's valuation is a great help. Yeah. The only thing is it doesn't give uh, some of the laneways like as such. Yeah. So it's difficult. Mm. And in a city where you had so many laneways, you had very small laneways. Even yeah. today now when I look at it, there's one or two laneways now had me puzzled to yeah. uh, think about where they were. Yeah. And uh, I know there's another laneway then in John Street. That I can't think now what it was. And I know it was a dead end of a lane. There was yeah. only about six houses on it. Yeah. So you want to know what you're looking for, you know. John, from John Street down, like, was a, it was a real warden. I know a guy did a, an article in the Old Limit Journal, go back about, um, over 20 years ago, on the names of lanes off John Street. Yeah. You got out of Morgana, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Some of the, a lot of them I remember, because my mother came from uh, Lane down there, 
at the back of um, Garvey's Range, is what it was called. And they were number one, Garvey's Range. And funny enough, I found their neighbours today now, number two, Garvey's Range. Uh, yeah. And the date from 1941 or 42, I was just curious. And uh, but they were they were built, he was a speculator, Garvey. He was yeah. a pipe manufacturer, and uh, he just decided he'd build a few houses. K pipes, sir. Or yeah, pipes, pipe, yeah. Smoking pipes. Smoking pipes, yeah, I should say, yeah. And uh, he just decided to build it, which which happened a lot in every city, really. We would ask some fellow with money, there were even money that time in property. Yeah. And decided to build a few houses for well, not for the first uh, speculators, really. Okay. And uh, but Garvey's Range was there up to I said it was up to the 70s, you know, mm -hmm. it was still there. Uh, the whole area is all kind of cleared now, yeah. but I'm um, like that. I remember going down there, and you could, if you were a few children that I knew down there back in the 60s, if you were playing a game uh, at night, you could follow one another and you might never find them because you could go up. And you were told not to go on to Broad Street or John Street. That's just kind of out of bounds. But you yeah. didn't need to because there were so many other laneways down onto Clare Street and back around. Oh, God, I remember well, I do. You know, all the laneways going round. Sometimes you, you wouldn't get lost, but you, you lose your bearings for a few seconds. Yeah. So what lane were you were on? Yeah. You know, we went from Old Clare Street right up onto All right, all right up to John Square. There were so many laneways there, and the garden houses that were down on, well, there are flats there now, going down towards, there was a pub there, um, near the, the city wall there, and you'd love the town wall cottage, which again yeah. is gone, you know, it's a shame to us. I don't know there one of a Seamus or Canada, and Seamus was trying to create this ambience of a, a summer's night, and he had these little things, what did they call them, they're like, um, Little th th things that you you soak in paraffin oil Entrance. and a burn like and he had these around the wall about six or eight of them and he had I think it was St John's Band there was about fifty people inside and playing music inside in Tomwell Cottage but the only problem was one one of the lights didn't go out at the far end and she had to run down and try and get this one to light and as he did it was like the Chinese with the plates. Yeah, yeah. The one at the far end then might go out, you know, and I yeah. think it's a bit more time running around trying to keep these little torches alight than anything else. But uh, <laughs> God, that was back in the, in the I'd say that was the 70s, that was before the demolished Townwall Cottage. Sean, Sean South lived in Townwall Cottage, or somebody, somebody. I don't know. We had a, we had a picture of it in the Automatic Journal recently. Yeah, but he's, uh, he was living in Henry Street. Yeah, but I think. Yeah, there's a, is there a connection there. There's another connection there that escapes me this minute now with Townwall Cottage. Yeah. Because I was on an outing with somebody yeah. and we went to Townwall Cottage. Mm. I can't think now what it was. You know, the, the ruins of it now as it is, you know. Yeah. It escapes me now at the moment. But like that, the whole area has been, I suppose, really, for want of a better word, desecrated, really. Yeah. But right up against the old walls. Bobby, Bobby Burns. Bobby Burns, that's it. Yeah. It's I couldn't yeah. think. Yeah, Bobby Bond. I couldn't think now, you're right. It's Bobby Bond that I was living there, yeah. yeah. And uh, that he's the man, of course, that was um, died outside as a uh, melee we'll say. Yeah. That was shot. Uh, in uh, uh, Actually, there's, there's a conne connection there now between Seamus and Canada as well. Mm. It was Seamus's father, I think, that drove the horse and cart, the carriage that took him to oh, the city home. Uh, the night he escaped from the city home. Yeah. And of course, he was mortally wounded, as we know. Yeah. Trying to escape. Bobby Bourne was. And he was taken out to Brennan's. Brennan's in Milik, yeah. Kelburn Road and up uh, Capanti, up towards Milik. Yeah. Uh, up to Watch House Cross and yeah. up, uh, up to Milik. And of course, he, but he died afterwards. There's a lovely memorial up there now. I was at the unveiling up there a few years ago. Yeah. Up there and, and the main road got up to Milik. Um, Patsy, you, that night, I've seen a picture of that. Yeah, I was sure. there today. Uh, um, Patsy was there that day now. Yeah. And, uh, but Patsy knows a fair bit about that now, around yeah. that area. You have, to, you have to talk to Patsy about that one. Almost. I was doing that when you talk about that now some night. And yeah. about the fishing industry, you know, and how to catch salmon and that. But anyway, yeah. that's for another night. But anyway, but uh, getting back to Tomball Cottage, it's a shame that... Uh, it's gone altogether, you know. Yeah. And, uh, 
that we can do what that's you recently said their their uh, ancestor was from Gary Owen and Limerick. Who was you know? And like who's from Gary who said Sally Shamro? So somebody wrote to me and said that their ancestor came from Gary Owen. And like when you say if you said to Gary Owen, somebody to Gary Owen now they think it's from the housing estate. Who did you <laughs> Gary on now, Gary on then was like just country, you know. People. It was actually. Lenin gives it. Lenin, Lenin's history. He gives the name of John's Garden. Yeah. And it was a beautiful series. Uh, I forget who he said now the owner of the garden was, but it's yeah. famous for its garden. And people would go for walks on a Sunday. Uh, yeah. what's, the, what's the word? They were pambulate and have a look as a have a look at the garden uh, of John's Garden. In yeah. Gary Owen. But that was even, there's a picture in again in one of Sean Cotton's book of an aerial photograph. I oh, know, it was taken from, it was taken from the cathedral. Oh, I know. The grave of the Kennedy. It was a, um, a Kennedy man. They had a furniture shop in town and they lived in Gary Owen. Ken, Kennedy, I'm going back to the 1920s now. Yeah. Kennedy, I had a, a furniture shop in, um, in, in Catherine Street, in Willow Street. And they lived in Gary Owen. Um, so uh, that, that's what it was. Um, but uh, that's what I was saying. The Gary Owen estate wasn't even there in the 20s. Oh, no, so. no. And neither was Killilee. Killilee came as well in the, I think Killilee came in the 40s because yeah. you can tell by the, the names of the streets, the yeah. King Street and Flood Street. So yeah. when, you, when you hear where the names come from, you see, you yeah. know, Downey. You know, yeah. don't you know that uh, you you know like straight away that they're not they're yeah. not very old estates, you know, with the names. Yeah. Although funny enough, I saw one avenue now in Killeely outside, it was Cregan Avenue. Mm. And I was puzzled with that, because isn't that called after um is it Con Cregan that's called after? Probably yeah. you know this minute. Yeah. And if was he dead well he must have been dead. How long was he dead at that stage? Yeah. He had Cregan Avenue, you know, in the forties. That's probably correct. Yeah. You know, the address is there. But it just puzzled me for a few minutes. I thought it was much later to get the name than that. Yeah. yeah. No, but um, look enough, you know, they've kept some of the names. It was a, you know a fellow the, the garage man there daily who's up yeah. in the back of the belt heavy. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean that that's wrong. That should that shouldn't be allowed. You know. Yeah. That's uh Tater Lane, uh, yeah. going down the back of uh, of uh, with a Coliseum. It was, was, yeah. was renamed Daly after after Daly, Daly's great. Ed, Ned Daly, who was killed. But he'll get the Avenue in Jamesburg called after him, you see. Yeah. You know? but, that, but it was named after, but he was prosecuted by the council because they thought that it was taken down. He put up the name Daly Avenue in his own. And they thought because he was Daly, he was named after himself. And they prosecuted him. And um, But he won the case because he proved that it was Daly after. Not, not to do with him, like you know. Um, so and I thought he put it up for himself now as well. No, well, his case was that it was named yeah. after it, Ned Daly, you know. Yeah, I never because I always thought that not Theatre Lane, um, go down the back, well, yeah. they need to build most of the houses anyway. All the this was something that people don't realize is all the houses from the end of Ballina Corra, really, down the whole way down along all the back entrances. Yeah, yeah. And uh, especially the Georgian houses, because they were built for um, with coaches, you see, yeah. for the coaches to go around. Because a man told me as well years ago that when they were renovating the county council offices on O'Connell Street, mm -hmm. they took in about, did they take in four or five Georgian houses there? And originally, the county council did. Yeah. And he said that uh, one man told me there were big tunnels around the back going into the houses. They were just flattened. And well, obviously, there must have been found servants going in. Yeah. Where did that be? I just really, I'd like to have seen them, you know, these tunnels that were going in, in underneath. They weren't, they weren't part of the sewers, which they further down, no? I doubt it. I doubt no. He said they were very big tunnels, you yeah. know. And uh, if, I, I, like, I didn't see them, you know. This yeah. friend just told me that he was inside demolishing the stuff. And it was afterwards he told me, like, that these tunnels were there. Just to see if they're on the old maps, you know, the... Oh, you would. And the old, then again, you want plenty of time doing chicken maps. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the only thing. And then when you, you get depressed sometimes when you look at maps and see how people have commandeered rights of way. A lot of people have done that. Yeah. Taken yeah. over laneways. 
which they really they have no right to. But yeah. then the population officials that I said I'll give you another day anyway, yeah. because I could name about at least four of them I know in town that have been taken over. That yeah. I remember being laneways with houses on them. And now they're just blocked up. There's oh. one there's one ex prominent one now I can think most people might see the gateway there is um right next door to Luigi's there in Parnell Street. There's, there's a lane we're going up there. I remember relations of my mother lived up there, Tommy Healy. Tommy and his brother had a store in Henry Street. He used to go around fixing, fixing gutters and, you know, the hand cart. And yeah. they'd go around fixing bits and bits of things. It's like Baba Jab Week. Yeah, yeah. Fixing gutters and from all the offices in O'Connor Street, we'd call them one of them, see them, we'd always see them on the street to fix uh, a drain pipe that was broken or a window that wouldn't do open or something, and the Healy's would over. Tommy lived up that lane by there, I remember going up to his house. You went yeah. up that lane by there, and you came around at the old Janus factory, and now it's just blocked up. You know, there's a lovely one in Wolf Thorn Street, blocked up. Mm. And I remember going up that one, and uh, I remember there were women up in that lane by there. You went up and around in the sector, and it came out in the Sarsfield Barracks. And there's so many of them. But then some of them in town have been blocked up because of, um, of well, What's the word they have for it now? Or savory behavior or antisocial. Antisocial behavior. There was a lovely one in, in off um off Little Catherine Street now to go right up onto up onto Fox's Bow. And that is blocked off because yeah. of that, you see, which it's a pity really, you know, there's some of them have been blocked off. And that's <laughs> what uh, antisocial behavior is trotted out a lot of time. But even out in the country now, I see a lot of people have put up gates and bow right away. Anymore. Yeah. And like I've seen out in West Limerick now, they put up uh, private, no entrance, and it's a it's a right away, you know. Uh, and you see, they're extinguishing extinguishing the right away then by doing that, you know. Yeah. See. It's a pity. And I have a, a, a very prominent friend of ours now, uh, a mutual friend of ours, kind of last Thursday I heard that he's his place blocked off, and mm. you need, like Fort Knox I heard getting in and out. Yeah. So um, you'd wonder, like you know. And uh, it, he has it blocked off. Again, it's obviously, obviously because people go on trespassing in, you know. Yeah. And, uh, it's, 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 it's terrible, really, it comes to that. Yeah. But what can we do about that, you know? We'll have to wait and see who the new mayor will be, you know? Maybe the new mayor might fill up some of the empty spaces in town. Mm. That's another sore point with me. To see where they put a car park in front of the railway station there, that big open square. And uh, the amount of laneways that were on that green... Yeah. I mean, well, I do. The, the lane was over there, and they could have built houses on that instead of a car park. Yeah. You know, for, houses for all the people, like, and uh, it's a huge square that is. But so it's, I mean, for the amount of space they're taking up, it's not, um, it's, like the, the, there isn't that many cars parked in there anyway, you know, it's kind of a, yeah. you know. Oh, it's, it's terrible. And another place above, where I definitely thought they should have put houses for, for older people, and we put them for one myself, is above, you know, when you come off, uh, if you're under the, 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 the well, I hate called the Childers Road, it's an awful name for road, but anyway, between the roundabout for where you go to uh, Lachor for Brough and Kilmallock, between that roundabout and the Barry Simon roundabout, they built a big, ugly wind scale in there, yeah. wind, wind trucks. Which yeah. you never see being used. Oh. All along there, they could have put houses there, mm -hmm. put the railway line behind, which wouldn't have interfered with the houses, and put houses all around there for older people. Yeah. And they'd have had cars passing all day, and it would have been something, well, as, it, as it stands this minute, it's just an open space and no good to anybody. I mean, there's so many spaces in town that could be built on, but there's, yeah. who cares, you know? Uh, yeah. There's so many derelict buildings, but I, I saw Tom, Tom told me about that recently. Like, it's all very well preserving derelict buildings, but you need to have a plan of what you're going to do with them. Right? Yeah, that, that is true, I suppose, you know. I it, saw, you know, they, they preserved a lot. Of, they put preservation orders on a lot of buildings, but all they kept was the facade, and they built a new building inside it. So, really, is it worth keeping just the front of a building, you know? But people said that to me about King John's Castle below, the time to put that big... Uh, arm thing, uh, the, the glass thing. But then I can I can go both ways on that. In one sense, it was wrong. One sense. Then the other side, 
what do you put there? Do you rebuild the wall? Is it like Disneyland? You know, yeah. if you rebuild the wall, then you have to say the wall is, is uh, artificial yeah. as well. You know, and how are you going to have an entrance in there? Yeah. Well, you, see, you could be arguing this now till the cows come home. It's like the fireplace below Nicholas Street. Yeah. The one that's inside in, in Tommy, 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 what's his name's place? Um, James, I can't even name now this minute. Paddy Healy. Tommy Healy's uh, shoemaker, he was there. Two yeah. months through the pairs. Uh, Paddy was running it for years after when, when Tommy retired, but uh, Paddy was very funny. But uh, he was well known as a sure, sure repair place. But when, they, when they, that building was locked down, there's a big fireplace there, as you know, from the wall inside, medieval fireplace. Yes, and that sir. Locked off was a grill. Mm. And what are they going to do with it? Yeah. What do you do with something like that? Yeah. You know, you, you take it out and put it into a museum or you make it accessible, you know, restore the building and put put the fireplace in as, but then you're recreating again, you know. It's very difficult, you know. It's a beautiful fireplace. When you mentioned the Healy um, uh, Shoemakers, I was thinking of Wallace, and Wallace was the man who had the furniture shop in memory, Mark Kennedy, and lived out in, in um, Gary Owen. Uh, Wallace in Catherine Street, in Minnesota. Oh, Wallace's. He did yeah. claps as well. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, I remember Wallace's. But I, yeah. I thought, no, the, uh, well, after probably different one of the family, you know, thought, there was one of them I thought lived in Ballinacora. Wallace's was where. Um, We've gone back further. Like, uh, what? Uh, the, the, when you, the, ref, the reference to um, to Gary Owen might be going back further, you know. Right, further, yeah. Because Wallace's uh, furniture shop, uh, the one at the top, I remember anyway, was in Roche Street. Uh, again, now it's another kind of a farm shop selling. Farm foods. Well, Joe Mara had the the stationery shop yeah. on the on the not on the Roche Street side of that is where Wallace's was. Yeah. Just there, next door to the Savoy Cafe. Yeah, there was a cafe there which I said before Berlusconi's father was supposed to have worked there. <laughs> and that's another one I'd like to prove. But I did hear that he worked there in the fifties. The yeah. Savoy Cafe. Not to be confused with the Savoy Cafe. Which, no, that was the Savoy, as opposed to the Vitos, I think, in the Savoy, which were three O'Connor Street, yeah. down on the other side. But that cafe was there, and that was there up to the up to the mid-60s, I'd yeah. say. Before next door to that, then you had uh, Helene Maud's, the yeah. lady shop next to that, in which one of them died during the week as well, Terry Cusick, because Cusick yeah. were also in the baking business. Yeah. They had a shop above in Parnell Street. Excuse yeah. me, taking shot. Anyway, that's that's a story for another day. But I remember Wallace, as you said there, because one of them went to school with a brother of mine. I think he was Wallace, and uh, that was at the, the model school. There's one of them in. Uh, there's one of them in, uh, an optician in Tralee, I think. Tralee, is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's what? funny. Uh, there's yeah. some people just kind of leave town altogether. But uh, he, he is connected because I know a man who attend, attended him recently, and he told him that he was connected to the Wallace of Limerick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. because that's that's what I'm certain. I'd like to know if I'm correcting that. You know, was it there? But I'm, I'm nearly certain it's there because they did a lot of clocks, um, and you see their name even on clocks to this day. The the the, the big wall clocks, not grandfather clocks, now the wall ones. The wall. But they around to say you see Wallace Limerick and those. But yeah. I thought we were going to talk about the other Wallaces now, the shoemakers. Okay, sure, yeah. because well, they they were big into, into shoe repairs. Well, Mickey Wallace. One of their sons became a priest, I think, or a brother, Christian brother. And he used to say, um, we, we, we're both in the same business, we both save souls. <laughs> Therefore, see, well, I never heard that now. Wonder, see, there were different branches then of the Wallace family. Oh, yeah, there was, was, uh, there was one of them set up above in Prospect, in the shops in Prospect. Yeah. And he did up, he gave up that shop and moved down to Henry Street, yeah. right across the Franciscan Church. Yeah. Then you had Mikey. Mikey then was down in Bridge Street. That's right. My little hut, which now is part of the graveyard. The cathedral yeah. took that over when that was knocked down. Yeah. And then you had another branch of them in the Crescent, uh, right at the corner of Hafstan Street and the Crescent. You went up steps to it. It's mm -hmm. now, is it Stokes? Was it the, is Stokes or one of them? What's the accounts for them? But then afterwards. It's just, uh, yeah. That's Stokes Kennedy. Is it one of them? One of them films anywhere were in the building afterwards. They renovated it. But he had a kind of Wallace was there up steps. He went up these beautiful aluminium steps 
which are all fancy wrought iron man they might have been more to that branch of the Wallaces who were cousins. And there was another one of them above I remember above in uh, off St. Joseph Street in uh, in in Bowman's on Bowman Street. There was another Wallace's down because I went to school with one of them and they had a little shop there where they fit shoes as well. And see they were brothers and then you have you know falling out and you have you know which which happens in 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 Fenno. that wouldn't happen in my family but anyway it happens in a lot of families where where they don't, where they don't be talking anymore. I think they my family that hasn't got one. But everybody and uh, but like that it happens, you know, for various reasons. Uh, there, one of their sons was principal in Castro College when it opened. That's 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 Mikey son now. That's yeah. young Martin who died unfortunately. You know, Martin Martin was younger than me now. He yeah. was as Martin. He was in Shannon as a teacher. Right, yeah. right, yeah, because uh, and I forgot about that. He was the first principal outside in. Was, yeah, and very well thought of as well. Yeah. yeah, but he was the son of Mikey now because they lived near me above in thing. And funnily enough, his Mikey's wife, her own name was Madge Danford. Oh. And don't forget Danford. It should be. They're related to the man. No, that was, um, do you remember he was, uh, there's a memorial to him outside in the Valley Simon Road. Danford or Danford? Where? What's his name? Danford. Or oh, Danford. Yeah, Danford. Oh. That's, uh, Tom Toomey now could, could give you a, a synopsis on him. The, the memorial was on the main Belly Simon Road, and when they ex extended the road, they moved it in. In a sense, it's preserved, but it's kind of lost. Now, yeah. there's the odd read put on it. It's on the right, if you're going out, it's the first turning to the right near Worts, where you went the fast ways. Oh, yeah. The yeah. telecom are in there as well. Custom Harris Hound, I guess. Yeah. The, the, the memorial is inside there on the left hand side. Now it's in a lovely pathway. Yeah. And the memorial is preserved, but it was moved when he died. He was taken, he was dragged all over the street. Yeah. By the, the black and tans. Uh, they left his body outside on, on the on the belly on the Belly Simon Road. Now he was related somewhere now to Mad Sanford. We're talking with probably confusing people now, who was that young Martin Wallace's mother. Well, so I think he would have been his grandfather. On the other side, if I'm last, if I'm last yeah. uh, certain, you know. But anyway, well, I'm going to be on the air now, 25 past. We stand for another five minutes anyway before yeah. we finish up. Anyway, because uh, one of the one of the directors looked in the door there, and I thought was um, we were being cut off for a minute, you know. We're not. But, uh, do, you want, do you want to remind the listeners from where we're broadcasting from? Just to... right, thank you. I should tell people we're the Limerick Historical Society, and this is a history program. We're more of a waffling. In history, well, we're kind of covering a few things anyway. I have with me Tom Dunneman, and uh, uh, just to tell people if you want to access this or tell people about it, if they're the guttons of punishment, they can tune in on Lear, L I R, Lear Media TV, or you can go to the YouTube channel, which is Lear Media TV. There's no doubt in that, it's just Lear Media TV or Lear Media TV, and don't forget to subscribe. And the bottom, uh, the bottom right hand corner, there's a little, a little box there, and just click on that. Just yes. doesn't cost anything, and you won't be billed for it. And uh, uh, but uh, just click on that, and it's a good way. Also, we're uh, we're promoting here the Limerick Historical Society. It's uh, uh, a society that myself and Tom founded about six years ago, only seven years ago, and uh, as opposed to promote uh, history in Limerick. Limerick City and area, and uh, we've kind of we have a website which we'd want to do more about, really, unfortunately. But we uh, we hope to be back. We have lectures from roughly from October to April, and then outings during the summer. Our outings mainly have been in the city, although we did have one time the Crusher, which yeah. was well attended one night. And yeah. uh, I think, what did we do, sir? I can't you think we did any other one? I can't yeah. Yeah, Clamara. Oh, we did, yeah. Oh, we did. I forgot Freddie Bock. We did. Yeah. Well, that was very good because I, um, I didn't realise he brought me down to a place, a, 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 a bridge I never knew existed, you know, yes, which was yeah. the old road to Dublin, he said, you know, and I didn't know that, but uh, yeah. I don't know everything. But uh, And we finished up that night in St. Sennans, St. Sennans Well, which is on the, the old graveyard at Clamara as you go down to the... 
that's the pub that was down there, just I played there many a time, I can't even name it now, but there's a pub down in the edge of the river there, in Clan Lara, which unfortunately is closed now again. Angles Rest. The what? Yep. Angles Rest. Angles Rest, yeah, down in the edge of the river. And uh, But like that, that was a good, very good outing that was. But if anybody wants to join, go on to the, onto the website and you'll see, or get in touch with me or with Tom, you'll find us, you know, if you're interested. And yep. uh, join up, we need the money. But anyway, uh, but anyway, it's just, it's an interest. And uh, it's, it's amazing the way you, you can get an interest in history, isn't it? You know. That's one thing that the COVID has done. It, it's got people thinking about their families and- Yes. Yeah. You get queries um, about, you know, people are interested in history. Um, how long it'll last, I'd say, when the COVID is gone, they'll forget about it again. But at least they're thinking about, you know, um, like I, I have a Facebook page Clean Historical Society, and during the COVID, I think we got next to a thousand, we've about 1,700 members now. And I'd say we'd only about, well, there's a lady, Kathleen Mulville, puts a lot of stuff up for me, but I'd say we'd only about five or 600 before the COVID, and now it's up to 1,700. And I'd say it'll be 2,000 within a couple of months. But it's an interest because people dip in and out and look at it like, you know, um, so uh, like, and, and the same with Limerick Historical Society. We get a lot of queries through the website. You know, you get queries from people. Yeah. So now, some impossible chasing names that you like. One came in today, Terrible Tommy. He was from Glen, actually. Uh, the story he came back to, he was involved in the gangsters. Very interesting character, a bit um, on the wild side. But I've asked the family members, and either they forget him or they, they've written him out of their, <laughs> their memories. Their lives. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this this guy is looking for connections to Terrible Tommy. Um, and and uh, then another fellow sent me a thing. Now, I know about this before, and John Conway and the Hotel in Glen often referred to it. There was a vote for the chairman of the, the Board of Guardians in Glen uh, in the workhouse. The meetings were held in the workhouse in Glen. And there was a tie. The vote was equal. So they said, like, what are we going to do? So they decided they'd have a a run, a race for the board. So they went out in the yard and they, they, they said, the sight of two rotund gentlemen uh, belting down, trying to tell out to reach each other. To, so it made all the, it went all over the world into different papers in America, and, you know, about this, about this race for the chair of Glenn Union, you know. Amazing, yeah. Things, yeah. things that people did. I, I remember, I remember in Limerick, there was a pram race one time. Yeah. People used to run with prams, you know. Yeah. I remember the final was in O'Connell Street, and yeah. I think it was finishing above at the Crescent, I remember. And there was a, I can't think where they ran from. I think they started to blow Todd's, I should be calling it Brown Thomas. And then the whole of O'Connell Street with empty prams, yeah. you know, and there was a speculation in the pram that you couldn't run up now with something was, was a, a little, I, I don't think there are any babies. Right? <laughs> any babies. I don't know. <laughs> Health and safety. <laughs> Name now two people, which I won't, and I remember, you know, and one woman came second, I think, you know, because I had a son convinced he was inside the pram. You could see his head popping up. <laughs> you could see his head popping up and down inside his. All, all women, it was. Yeah. All women. No, 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 I barely remember it. There must be good coverage of that in the paper. I was, yeah. I'm talking about, this is in the 60s, the late 60s, even that, sir. And funnily enough, Right, I remember, it's funny things to remember, I remember that day in particular, come around with my hand to an, another bakery that was in, it's a little red brick building, it's now owned by either an insurance broker or an accountant on Hoston Street. Right as you come around from what used to be the Silver Place, there's a little red brick building there. Yeah. That was a bakery shop. And I remember going in there on my hand after the pram list and getting buns on a Sunday evening when every place else was closed, you see. Yeah. But they were open because of the pram race. Yeah. And there, was, there was a lot of people in there. Now we're looking in there and out my hands into that. And to this day, when I passed that building, I think in the bakery that was there. I don't know who owned it or what it was. Yeah. I remember it was the bakery with yeah. the small lots of buns, apple slices and a few yeah. easy things to do, you know. Inside, and I remember going down there after the premise that the final was on in the Sunday. The streets were packed 
with these women running up with empty prams, you know. And yeah. the big high prams, you see, were better, but they were harder to control. Yeah. You know? yeah. And there'd be no buggies that time, you see. Like a shotgun trolley. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you're going to regret carnival again, though, you know. Um, yeah. If, if you're, That's if you're, it. Uh, you know what I say? Take it out. If somebody's out there now, right, just supposing we had a listener under 40 who wanted to go in and... Uh, and research that. It'll be a good article now for the Old Week Journal, wouldn't it? Yeah. Limerick's Pram Derby. You know? The Derby, the Derby that was running O'Connor Street. I find out who, who I could be a head team now, or her, because yeah. I know a few names that were out there. Yeah. there because my aunt would say, oh, look at what's her name, you know. My yeah. aunt knew a few of them. There must have been pictures taken at that. Right. Uh, I tell Sean Curtin to go and look it up as well. Maybe. Yeah. We find the forces, you know. I never thought of telling Sean about that. But um, anyway, that's just oh. something that came into my mind. Yeah. See the that was there, you know. Tom, I think this is the only time we finished up. Yeah, okay, Tony. Right. We're here now for, for an hour. I think we are about an hour anyway. I what? keep forgetting to oh. How long would you think? Are we talking? An hour and ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. I think this time, I think this time we kind of do it. If anybody wants to get in touch with any of us, you'll find us. And if there's something you wanted us to uh, discuss or, yeah. or something else, you know, and have a go at somebody or show them up in history and tell us their, their relations, they were robbers and thieves, you know, in Australia, the better, you know. <laughs> because, as you know, there's a disgrace now. There's, a, there's a something, wasn't it, in Australia? There's like... Uh, it's of honor. Yeah. yeah. Convict club. Convict, yeah. To have somebody that was a convict and done good afterwards, come yeah. out as a convict. And yeah. I, just the last one, tell you, Tom, talking to names, I got an interesting one on Friday from a man that rang me. He's doing some kind of a project and he wanted to trace a few names in Limerick. Mm. And I said, what are they? <laughs> one is Ryan. Lovely, yeah. 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 I said, you see, having me on, I said, yeah. What's the other one? Uh, geez, I can't get the other one out there. Oh, no. I, I, I had to laugh when I heard the, the three names. It was, oh, Collins. I said, Collins. Oh, lovely. I said, you know. And I said, you want to go to West Limerick? And I can't get the third one out. I said, is this for having me on? You know. So I told him to ring me back in about a week and a fortnight. You know. And if, if he does... I'll put him in the line of a few people. He can yeah. turn in someone else. I mean, Ryan is impossible unless you have the the, 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 the nickname, yeah. And if you have that, and then you need a place of yeah. some bit of a board anyway, you know, because they're, they're impossible, you know. Because the, the problem is the nicknames are not usually are not in the records, like you no, know. no. But it's it's very handy now. There are people around who can tell us straight away. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, there was a man t- told me one time in Capo Moore that there was some American came back and he was given, I think there's $50 or something anyway, to the person locally who come up with the best yeah. nickname or the most unusual one. And mm-hmm. they were coming up to him and giving him Ryan Buck, Ryan Barn, Ryan Green, Ryan, you know, and this, this wizard came up to him and he said, Rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you have an unusual one there, are you? are not getting the 50, the 50 dollars. The man couldn't tell me who got it, but the road one there, Rhinoceros, he took yeah. something in the list. You know. I know from that problem, Ryan, he's known as the Rhinoceros. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway we're getting into trouble here now, talking to Ryan's and Rhinoceros. So yeah. people, there's people out there who take on bridges, isn't that? You know, Tom, if I can get this little mouse now down, I'll cut you off. So look, Tom. Till, uh, till next week, we will be back again, if we're allowed. You know, we'll, we'll talk another bit of waffle about some other bit of uh, local history of that. Okay, Tam? Good night, good luck. Good luck, Tam.